When I was a kid growing up, I came across a video called So You Wanna Fly a Helicopter. It's basically an old helicopter flying tutorial video and it was the greatest thing of my entire childhood. So, in the spirit of one of my favorite videos of all time, please enjoy this. Welcome to Sparky's program on what you should know about flying helicopters. This program takes you into the realm of rotary wing flight and brings the exciting world of helicopters into your living room like you've never seen before. This program will thoroughly prepare you for all the thrills and challenges of helicopter flight. Your host, Heavy D, helicopter pilot and aviation enthusiast, acts as a vlogger, an antiquer, treasure hunter, monster jam driver, a drifter, a mechanic, a friend, a father, husband, and now a prankster. Now let's join Heavy D as he explains what you should know about flying helicopters. Hello, I'm Heavy D, and I'm your host for this video program. We're going to introduce you to the world of flying and give you a real leg up on how to fly. So you want to fly a helicopter. You better watch this program. This is a helicopter. These are helicopter blades. This is a tail rotor. Cargo area, skids, not a helicopter. This is an airplane engine. If there's one thing I know, it's safety first. Seat belt. So come on over and let's take a look at the control. Okay, well, that's, we're gonna go ahead and just, it's a lot of work to do that. So I'm just gonna do it like this. I'm gonna do regular style now. Not, it, how, why is it so hard to go back in time and do a tutorial video? You'd think it would be easy, but it's not. I got mad respect for the guys who had to do tutorial videos back in the 80s and 90s. So listen guys, what I wanna do is show you some of the basics of helicopter flight, how the helicopter works, what components are what, and uh, what it takes to hover, what it takes to land, take off, and just cruise straight and level. So we're gonna start by showing you what hovering consists of, because believe it or not, Hovering a helicopter is one of the most difficult parts of flying. So guys, I gotta obviously throw out a disclaimer. Uh, this video is not intended to be any sort of like flight instruction because I'm not a flight instructor, I'm just a private pilot. So everything I'm showing you is just showing you how a helicopter works, I'm not necessarily trying to teach you how to fly it. Obviously, uh, don't ever try to fly a helicopter or any aircraft unless you are a licensed pilot. Um, and also know that in this video, all of the flying was done under the supervision of a licensed pilot and nobody without a license tried to fly the helicopter. This is what it looks like when somebody with zero flying experience tries to hover a helicopter. Take it away, bad boy. Got this bad boy. A little bit of left, a little bit of left. A little bit of Mardi Gras in your life. You got this, easy. Little, little too jittery, little too jittery. Whew. A little too much. Better than hands? Take that, hands! Hey, hands, I beat you. The instructor said so. As you can see, it's pretty complicated. It's not nearly as easy as it looks. But, take it up a notch, we're gonna show you what it looks like with somebody with a little bit of flying experience, tries to hover helicopter. Take it away, Diesel Dave. As you can see, he still can't safely hover it by himself without a professional pilot on board. Now, finally, this is what it looks like when yours truly, an experienced helicopter pilot, tries to hover a helicopter. Right, guys i want to give you a basic rundown of the controls in a helicopter all right this is engine number one throttle this is engine number two throttle when we're flying we run with both these throttles all the way forward when it comes to gauges in a helicopter you've got a bunch of different gauges this is what's called steam gauges because they're old analog gauges new helicopters have a big glass panel like a computer screen but this gauge right here is your airspeed tells you how fast you're going through the air this gauge right here is your triple tack. It tells you the RPM of both your engines because this is a twin engine helicopter and it also tells you the RPMs of your main rotor system. 
you want all three of those needles to be right at 100% when you're flying. If you get too low on rotor RPM or engine RPM, the main rotor system can stop flying and you can actually fall right out of the sky. Over here, you've got your altimeter that tells you basically what your exact altitude is. You've got your vertical speed indicator, which tells you how quickly you're going up or down, and it measures it in feet per minute. Um, right here, you've got your compass. Here, you've got your radar altitude, which tells you how high you are above the ground in feet. Here, you've got your turn indicator, which tells you as you're flying through the air, whether you're straight or crooked. Over here, you've got your torque gauge, which tells you how much torque the engines are creating and putting on the drivetrain and transmission. Here, you've got engine number one and engine number two TOT gauges. Those basically tell you how hot the exhaust gas is on the engine. Down here, you've got your N1, which tells you what your compressor is running at, and you're limited at 104%. The rest of these are oil, temp, uh, fuel gauges, and then finally, on this helicopter, you've got what's called the mass moment indicator. And over here, you've got your avionics, your radio. Basically, this uh, right here is the radio that allows me to talk to other pilots, allows me to talk to the control tower, air traffic control. Um, you've got a backup radio, and then we've got a transponder. The transponder basically uh, is a beacon that puts out a code so that air traffic control and other aircraft can know who I am, where I am in relation to them, and what my altitude is. And this is the back seat where the bad boys hang out. We can sit, be on our phones, talk to each other, and we can also watch YouTube videos. In fact, you're watching a YouTube video right now. Make sure you subscribe, like the video. We're giving away a vehicle every 250,000 subscribers. So subscribe and come chill out here with the bad boy. Hey, don't tell Dave my feet are on the, don't tell him that my feet are on the seats. Pretty simple. This right here is called the cyclic. This is basically what controls your front, back, side to side uh, motion of the helicopter. This right here is what's called the collective. You pull it up if you wanna go higher, you put it down if you wanna go lower. So when you hear me referring to pulling power, that means I'm pulling this up. What the collective does, two things. It changes the pitch of the main rotor blades, and as you change the pitch, that creates more lift. It also has a governor which connects to the engine. So as I pull that up, it creates more lift, which creates more drag on the engine, so it in turn, the governor, turns the engines up to match the speed. So as I put that down, I reduce power. And then the final control is the pedals. And these control the thrust of the tail rotor, which essentially counteracts the rotation of the main rotor system. So, give you a quick example. If you wanna take off, basically all hands on the controls. And since the rotor blade on this helicopter system spins counterclockwise, you gotta make sure that when you start to take off, you have the left pedal ready because otherwise the helicopter is going to want to spin to the right. So I use the left pedal to counteract the spinning. So I start to pull up on the collective, start pulling power, it starts creating lift, helicopter picks up, and then I start to hover and I control the hover right here with a cyclic and I make sure that I'm giving it plenty of left pedal to keep it from spinning to the right with the main rotor system. Hovering in a helicopter is what uses the most amount of power because it's basically like trying to tread water in a way the best. All right, guys, when I started doing this vlog stuff, this YouTube stuff, I told you that I was going to show you kind of just like the good, the bad, the ugly, the crazy, the cool, and sometimes just the run of the mill day uh, in my life. And that's what I'm going to show you today. And it's not really fair to say run of the mill day in my life because what I'm going to do is actually pretty cool and I love it. And I've worked really hard to be able to get to the point to do this kind of stuff. But long story short, last night I flew my helicopter out to the other side of the Great Salt Lake. You guys already know that I'm fascinated with the Great Salt Lake. I had ownership in an island out there called Fremont Island, which we recently sold and it was donated back to the state. And it's a really cool, cool story there, which I'll tell you guys in another video. But basically flew out last night to check out another piece of property on another island on the lake um, that I think we're gonna buy. So we got out there, landed, checked out the property, super stoked on it. Go to get in the helicopter, go to take off. And my helicopter is a twin engine. Engine number two, which is on the right, I start it first, bam, fires right up. I go to start engine number one, click, 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 nothing. So we are on an island in the middle of the Great Salt Lake, like hours away from anywhere on roads. So I call my buddies here at Classic Helicopter. Uh, let me show you, they're basically my hangar. Classic Helicopter is basically right over there. Cool guys, great company. I call my buddy Adam and I'm like, hey Adam, um, <laughs> This is, now keep in mind, this is the first time my helicopter has ever left me like stranded. I've had off, I've had like weird moments where the battery didn't, you know, they're old machines. It was a 1988. They've got like little quirks and stuff. Um, 
But long story short, Classic Helicopter, super great company. Uh, when we broke down last night, I called over there and I was like, hey, Adam, can you come pick us up? He's like, yeah, I got Kobe over there at the airport. He'll come grab you in a minute. So they send the pilot up, grabbed their helicopter, and they came out and got us. Because otherwise, we would have been there probably all night or waited for hours for our ride to come get us. So anyways, basically, that was last night, Friday night. Now it's Saturday morning. So this should be pretty fun. So with this being my first time <laughs> out on this property in an actual truck, um, I took a wrong turn. And now I'm just rock crawling on the beach. And uh, one thing you should know about the Great Salt Lake is, although that lake bed right there looks like it's nice and easy and you can drive on it for days, it's not. It will sink me so freaking fast. I'll be stuck out here. Which I really don't want to do because the heart's about to get to. So anyways, I'm just creeping along. Luckily, this is all private land, uh, so it's not like I'm off trail on public lands, but man, I do not trust uh, that or that. Mostly that. I took a wrong turn somewhere. And like I said, we're just barely looking at buying this property. So I'm not too terribly familiar with it. I do know that there's a lot of cows out here and there's a lot of cow poops. Lots and lots of poops. So, as you can see, I came from up there. Came down this way and came along here. Well, the helicopter's way over there, so I was supposed to go. From the top, make it drop, that's somewhere. Now get a bucket and a mop, that's somewhere. Over the top and make it, because there's no roads right here. So we're gonna check out. Luckily I got my Raptor, and it's lighter than my diesel pickups. I actually am super impressed with it. I've really, really enjoyed the Ford Raptor. You can see, like where the cows are stepping and they're sinking, that's not a great sign. But there's also truck tracks out here and there's tons of four wheeler tracks. I've seen the guys, oh, that's squishy, I don't like that. I've seen the guys on four wheelers out here and they seem to be following this path okay. So basically what I'm saying is, I guess, well, I'll probably go right over there and connect onto the four wheeler path. All right, well, we are on the shoreline and it's still pretty stable, but as you guys can see, I'm not very confident in this dirt. Uh, just got out here to the helicopter. Obviously you can see the Raptor made it uh, along the sketchy section of the beach there, no problem. So I'm actually super stoked that I'm not stuck right now. Uh, this is where the helicopter, basically where we had to leave it yesterday. We landed here to check out this property. And then when we came back, um, like I said, it didn't want to start and the left engine starter was acting up. So uh, even though I have the correct part, I bought a whole new starter. Um, if, I, if the starter actually is bad, I unfortunately am not allowed to fix it myself um, just because FAA law, federal aviation law says that um, I have to have what's called an A&P license. So that's uh, like a aircraft mechanic license. Um, and it's a good idea that they make that a, a law because inexperienced mechanics, even though I'm I'm experienced, um, they don't want people working on their own aircraft. They want like very, very highly skilled, experienced mechanics working on it. So the starter is one of those things where if it has to be replaced, I have to call my buddy Paul and he has to drive all the way up from Provo or Spanish Fork or wherever he's at, which is like a two hour drive. So I'll just be sitting here waiting. However, I have a feeling that it's not, well, I don't know, 50, 50 chance. Could be a loose connection. I didn't have the tools yesterday that I needed to be able to uh, take the cowling off and get in there and figure out what's going on. So now that I've got the ladder, I've got my tools, I can pull the cowling off and I'm crossing my fingers that it's just a loose connection. And if it is, then it should be pretty quick fix. Be able, and that's something I can personally do because um, I'm a licensed pilot. Like I said, not a licensed A&P mechanic though. So if that's the case, fantastic. I will put the uh, jump box in the battery because the battery's dead for some reason. And uh, I'll be out of here in a minute. So. 
I'm really hoping that's the case because I don't want to sit here for three hours and wait for Paul. I'm going to start by taking this cowling off. So you check out the ladder here. This is the engine cowling right here. Um, this is engine number one on the left side of the ship. This is the one that's having the starter issues. Engine number two is over here on the right side. Starter's working just fine on that one. So um, I'm probably going to pull both cowlings off to be able to dig in there, figure out what's going on, and hopefully not have to uh, put a starter in it. So got my tools over here. Here we go. I might have to pull the whole thing off. I was just gonna pull one side off, but let's see. One cowling down and like I said, we might have to pull the other one, might not. Nope, I don't think so. Eh, maybe, we'll see. It's just tricky, tricky business here. Along with any other. Found the problem. Um, pretty simple problem, actually. And uh, now it's time to test it out and see if, uh, well, hopefully, what we did is gonna solve the problem. So right now I'm gonna try to start it. I'm at least gonna try to spin the starter motor. And uh, if we hear turbine screaming, that's a good sign. Ready? Good sign. It's fixed, battery's dead. But I got a jump pack for that. So now I just gotta put the cowling back on and uh, Put the jump pack on, get it started, get it running, and get out of here. Because uh, even though it's sunny, the temperature is definitely starting to drop a little bit. So we're going to take that cowling, put it back on this side. How greasy I got. The service truck, <laughs> put all the tools away in the Raptor, put the cowling back on this side, put the engine cowlings, uh, the inner ones back on, and uh, we'll be good to go. So I'm going to put those on, and we'll fire it up. Well guys, there you have it. Just like that, helicopter's fixed. Now I'm back at the hangar. But now, since I went out there alone, I got one of my guys coming to the hangar right now to meet me. He's gonna fly back out to the island with me and bring my truck back because I don't want to spend the night out there by itself. Not gonna lie, it went uh, a lot smoother than I expected. I was expecting deeper issues and I'm really glad it was something that I could fix personally and didn't have to wait for my AMP mechanic, Paul, to come out and meet me there because to be honest with you, I don't think we would have got it done today. And uh, this weather is just like unbeatable. So we have my man Burn out here, ready What's to up? be a uh, backup driver, right? That's right. Actually not backup driver. He is, he's the main driver. How do I? You know, this is uh, this is the part the whole world wants to see. That was graceful. That, guy, I'm a little hot. that was like. All right, guys, so as you can see, I had a hell of a time out on the island getting the chopper fixed. Fortunately for me, it ended up being a loose wire that I was able to repair myself and not have to wait for my AMP mechanic to come out and work on it with me. That's always nice. That means I was able to get it fixed, get it back to the shop. All right, internet, what do you want to start with? Social security number, bank account information? No. Hey, don't be like this guy. Don't be the guy that's putting all your top secret confidential information out on the world wide web, especially through public Wi-Fi for everybody to see. Guys, this is no joke. Identity theft. We all know that's not a joke. So here's the deal. I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. 
Surfshark VPN. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. Basically, it's an app that you can download on your phone or your computer. You connect through it when you go to the internet and it encrypts all your information. Makes it all go dark so the hackers can't sit there and steal your social security number like I'm sure they just did with my best buddy and they're probably buying a brand new boat in his name. I guess who's not gonna get to enjoy the boat? That guy. Who's gonna enjoy it? The hacker. Not me. I use Surfshark VPN. You can get 83% off Surfshark VPN plus the three months, first three months, free. All you gotta do is click the link in my description below, use the promo code SPARKS at checkout, and wham, bam, thank you Heavy D. I just made your internet browsing experience super safe, and you're not gonna end up looking like this dummy. Next item would be takeoff. Taking off is also a fairly complicated maneuver. You pull up, you get into a steady hover, and then you take the side click right here, and you gently ease it forward. Nose forward, and the helicopter's gonna start hovering forward, and then, Bam, you start flying, you get into what's called ETL. ETL stands for Effective Translational Lift. It's basically when the helicopter transitions from hovering to flying. So now ETL is much easier to manage. It's basically like flying an airplane because the rotor disc turns into basically a rotary wing. So you're no longer hovering and the helicopter doesn't have to use nearly as much power. So you can see as we're flying, I've got my power, my collective, pretty much set in one position. Right about 60% torque. I don't need to mess with the power level that much uh, right now. Now, all the flying is gonna be done based off the cyclic right here. So if I wanna go right, I go right. If I wanna go left, I push it left. If I wanna go up, I pull back. And if I wanna go down, I push forward. Now, if I wanna go faster, I pull up on the power, the collective, to about 70% torque while at the same time pushing forward with the cyclic, which is the stick right here in my lap. And then the combination of more power and more pitch on the blades plus the forward angle is what makes the helicopter go faster. See, we just went from about 60 knots to 100 knots in a couple of seconds. Now, if I wanna climb and keep my speed, I pull in a little bit more power and keep the cyclic roughly where it's at. That's called a collective climb or you can do a cyclic climb, which is you keep the power at 60% where it's at, and 60% is just an arbitrary number. That's just a cruise flight number. That's a good safe number to be at. But if I don't want to change the power, or if I'm already at max power, like 100%, then I have to do what's called a cyclic climb. That's basically where I keep the power set where it's at, and I pull back on the stick. And you can see we're climbing at about, oh, 100 feet a minute. When you're flying in straight and level flight, the tail rotors, when you're flying in straight level flight, the pedals that control the tail rotor are more or less just to keep the helicopter kind of straight through the air. Because as you're flying, the wind acting on the airframe of the helicopter is actually what keeps it going straight. So you don't need to use a lot of pedals in the air. You're gonna use the pedals when you're anytime you're in a hover or on the ground. Here's one of the probably most tricky parts of flying and that's landing. You basically start to reduce power by lowering the collective while pulling back on the cyclic at the same time. So anytime you're gonna do a maneuver that's gonna go faster or slower or higher or lower, essentially it's gonna be a combination of the cyclic and the collective working together. The more you pull up on the collective and push forward on the cyclic, the faster the helicopter's gonna go. The more you pull back on the cyclic while pulling up on the collective, the more you're gonna climb. If you reduce the collective and pull back on the cyclic, you're gonna do what's called a flare and the helicopter's gonna kind of push its blades into the wind or you can push forward on the cyclic and down a collective at the same time to uh, basically lose altitude very quickly. So those are basically the, the essential controls that you're gonna use in a helicopter. Now, hovering a helicopter is one of the most difficult maneuvers because you have so many different things acting on the airframe. You've got the rotation of the main rotor system, you've got gravity pulling the helicopter down, you've got the weight in the helicopter, you've got the heat, you've got the, the density of the air outside. So essentially in the summertime, helicopters don't fly as well because the air is hot, which makes, which makes it more thin. And the air going into the engine is hot, so the engines get hotter. In the wintertime, helicopters tend to have more power because the air is cold, which makes the air thicker, and the cold air going into the engine keeps the engines running cooler. So in a turbine helicopter, there's two things that are gonna limit you. Torque and TOT. TOT is basically your exhaust gas temperature. In the wintertime, torque is usually gonna be your limiting factor. And in the summertime, the TOT is gonna be your limiting factor. This helicopter can go all the way up to 85% torque with both engines running. And that's the maximum you can pull 
before having to take it in for an inspection. For example, if I were to take off and I pulled 100% torque on accident, well, then I would have to mark that down, take it to the mechanic, and they'd have to search the whole drivetrain to make sure that nothing was damaged because even though the engines can create that amount of power, the drive lines and the transmission aren't rated to take that full amount of power. Somebody.